All right, legends and super legends, welcome to Velo Harmony. Velo Harmony Live. Just rolled in from a serious session with my brother Paul. We did a ride today. And so uh, got the inspiration to do a live session today to talk about um, annual bike fits and um, your know, cycling periodization. Spring is here pretty much for most of the country. Depending on where you live, you may still be thawing out. But now's the time to get rid of all the little niggling issues you may be having before you really get full blown into, you know, increasing your training load. So it's a good time to get your fit reviewed and so forth. And also focus on what you're going to do to improve your fitness. We're assuming that you've been doing stuff over the winter to build your base. If you haven't, then this will be your base building period. That's the whole thing with periodization. I see we've got about nine people on here so far. Um, I know my brother's going to be joining us soon. There's Jeffrey. So we didn't. I didn't ride this Saturday. Um, just decided to take a Saturday off. I've been riding for like the last 56 weeks consistently. You know, I've got rest periods built in. But I just needed to kind of back off a bit and get ready for my spring periodization the next six weeks. So I took a rest week, didn't write Saturday, but I wrote Sunday. Just kind of did my own thing, you know, a few hours. And so now, you know, this is Tuesday, just got back from a ride. This is a new kit that was sent into the channel. I'm working on the review video, it should be coming out shortly. And I filmed a little bit of it today on the bike. I like to do these reviews now Besides just giving all the details, I like to get into showing you how the kit performs on the road because the padding in the shorts make a difference from brand to brand for your comfort. John Hill, welcome. So I don't like to just unbox, wear it in the studio. Even when I do it in the studio, sometimes I'll get on the trainer. And so um, we've got a collab going on with Suki Sports. And so I did a full video and just felt like something was lacking. So today I added outdoor activity. Paul filmed me riding with the, with the kit on. And I really like the way they feel. They're very close to La Passion. So Jeffrey, you're going to like this kit because the, the quality is there. The pricing, I think, is maybe slightly better than La Passion. But the sizing is a little tricky. I mean, the ranges are good, but their lettering is kind of like Castelli. Like they call this a 2XL, and it really fits like a large Rafa. So, you know, as long as you get your ranges, I had them send the ranges. And so I will put some links in there. I got them to give us discounts for those of you who want to try them. So it's a pretty, it, they have an office in the UK and in China. And I think that's what they manufacture. Yeah. So, oh, you got a laser. <laughs> it's, it's very light. I, I actually wore the laser Genesis today. And so when you see the review of this kit where I'm riding in it, I've got the laser because the laser matches this orange and it matches and I wore orange shoes, you know, just to give it a pop. And so, yeah, I, I like the laser. It is very light. It is very light. But uh, the reason I'm bringing these guys, I talk about it in the review is I don't want to just bring Rafa Asos and stuff like that. We got to give everybody ranges. This is that the stuff is more affordable and the quality is there. I really like the way this feels almost like silk. So they made a good kit. And so they contacted me and I picked this outfit because they really did not have a good size chart. So I gave her my dimensions and then she sent it. I was a little leery about how it would fit, but it fits really well. So uh, so I went ahead and did the review and it's going to come out probably tomorrow. I think you all will like it. It's just I want to introduce more things so that everybody's got different budgets that can accommodate it. But now's the time of the year for looking at, you know, how do your shoe fit? How does your, your bar, are your hands getting numb even though your saddle's right? Then look at your brake hoods. There are a lot of things you can tweak on the bike because fit is dynamic based on how much training you've been doing or how you were set up before. Don't ignore discomfort. That's your body telling you something's off on the bike. So you want to get the bike to fit you. So you can always review your fit. Even if you've had it professionally done, don't ignore the little things that are bugging you. You know, so just keep that in mind. 
Yeah, I think you would like this kit, Jeffrey. But I, I wanted to talk today about you making sure that as you start to put in the miles, pay attention to any little feedback your body's giving you. If you got a twinge in your knee or something, it's telling you something's off. And sometimes it's hard to diagnose what's causing that little thing. But don't ignore it because as you pile on more time on the bike, you can aggravate certain things. Even the pros have had problems with stuff like that. So don't ignore it. If you've done any changes that may be causing discomfort, you got to go back and revisit that and get some help if you need to. And so this time of year, if you've already done, let's say about, mm, I would say 1,600 kilometers or 1,000 miles as a gauge, six to eight weeks of training like you know if you've done your base training now's the time to start ramping up and hopefully you're training using your zone it's time to start increasing your effort now as you get ready for your grand fundos and other things uh we've got more grand fundos coming out because now texas is open and so people are doing things we're still being cautious but outdoors on the bike you're good to go so we're looking at things down the road that we may visit and attend and this time of year, between now and like mid-June, the weather is very, very nice around here. We're talking 28 Celsius, you know, 84, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And then like late June, then it gets hot. And then so we got to go out earlier, you know, like five-ish in the morning and try to finish earlier. So most of the year, we can ride pretty much all the year. We just got to go out there. I will be doing another uh, review of all the the thermal bottles out there. I have gathered different thermal bottles. I've got uh, the Elite Nano Jelly. I've got the Elite Nano Fly. I've seen reviews for them out there, but they're incomplete, meaning people will do reviews and just say, oh, this bottle is four times as cold as the other one. Well, that's not enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put ice water in them, put them outside, and every hour I will taste each one on camera and see which one is colder, up to four hours, because that's what they all claim, and see who's the winner. So we've got the Podium Ice, Podium Chill, Nano, the Elite Nano, uh, they call it Nano Elite Fly, or something, like, I don't know if I got the name right, but all the top thermal bottles that you can carry regularly on your bike. I'm not talking about the aluminum ones. I've got the aluminum thermal bottles, they're heavier, but they will beat out all the other ones, but they're so heavy, it's not practical to carry when you're riding. Unless you're riding solo, it's just too heavy. But, you know, not not inordinately heavy. I may include it in the test, but it wouldn't be fair. It would win hands down. The aluminum thermal bottles are so much better. But I'm going to be reviewing bottles that look like regular cycling bottles. That they're about, they'll hold anywhere from 500 mil to 600 mil. They're generally around 500 milliliters of water. So that's what I'm going to be reviewing. And I think it will give you a better idea of which ones to buy based on where you live. Because I looked online, I looked on YouTube, nobody's doing a review where they actually tell you and they're using all these bottles. The bottles are kind of pricey. The, the Nano Fly bottle is like 40 bucks for a bottle. And if it does not pass the test, it's going back. <laughs> you know, So it's kind of like, you know, for that kind of money, it needs to do the job. And so with our weather like it is, and I think it will be very useful for all of you, regardless of where you live. So you can kind of know what to buy it will be one of those archive videos for the channel because you need to know before you spend your money if these bottles really do what people are saying let's see here uh john hill what are your thoughts on the specialized helmets i don't own any junk john but they're they're pretty nice i i don't own any because of the shape they've never worked for my head i've tried them in the past unless they've changed their shape recently um they're not very oval i have a round head so Giro, um let's see the laser even even the cask work really well for my head i own those and then the bell of course but the specialized seem to be more oval they're almost for people that have an oval shaped head so i don't believe they've made those changes uh because that's been my experience even their shoes don't work for my foot because they have too much of an arch in them. Specialized CD, you know, even physique. So yeah, so but quality wise, they're 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 on par. So if they suit your head, let me see here. Specialized. I'm I'm doing a search right now. Specialized for 
oval special eye helmet for round heads. Because <laughs> I'm sure they've gotten that complaint over the years. Okay, so they've got some. Um, let's see here. A line to the specialized evade. There we go. They call it Asian fit, which I think is kind of weird. I don't think all Asian people have round heads. So you would look for bicycle helmets for rounder Asian fit heads. Helmet that aug. Let me see here. This is somebody's site for the helmet safety industry. So the Siroku SRX Pro jerseys are very nice and reasonable. I was shocked with the quality for their prices. I'll check that out. I'll check that out, Jeffrey. Bicycle Helmet Safety Institute. So you pretty much have to see, John, before you buy it, whether it is for rounder shaped heads before you spend your money. Or if you have a local bike shop that has them, go try them on. Because in the past, I've tried them, and they were just too tight on the sides for me because they were more like this as opposed to being round. That's the key thing you got to look for. And the guys that make the round helmets, they cheat because they give you pads so that if your head is oval, you can fill in the space. <laughs> yeah. So let's see here. So, yeah, uh, Specialized is actually listed. Um, I see them on here. It said that Smith is good. Font Rager has Asia Fit versions. And then Laser, uh, AF in the private sense of Asia Fit. Okay. So I'm on a site here that is called Bicycle Helmet Safety Institute, helmets.org. And what they're saying is there are two things you need to look for. Look for AF in the product name, which designates Asian fit, which they use to mean it's a rounder shape. Or look for, let's see. I want to see what there was something else that said. I don't know if it's just Asian fit. I guess that's what they use Asian fit and then the red circular dot. Okay. So Smith, the Smith helmet is a relatively new helmet that came out a few years ago. They're, they're kind of pricey. They're up there with the top guys, but they use a red circular dot on their helmet for their Asian fit style. So when you buy the helmet, make sure you ask for that. I don't bother with, Giro because their helmets out of the box is round. The same thing with laser and so forth. So uh, Specialized has two shapes that they make. So you just have to ask for that one. And then you'll be good to go. So it's good to know that they're making that because I like some of their styles. I mean, I see the pros riding them. They're pretty nice. But my experience in the past had been that just the ones that, that were carried locally did not suit my head. Then when you put them on, they just grab you really tight on the sides of your head when they're narrow like that. They don't they don't come all the way down. They sit up on, you know, you can get a larger size, but it just leaves a lot of gaps where you don't want them. So I haven't tried them lately for that reason. Sirocco SRX Pro Jersey. Never heard of them. Uh, let me see here. They look nice. They have good colors. I like the, the solid colors. Cycling fashion, reasonable price. 60 US, thereabouts, almost 60 US. That's not bad. Um, I, you know, there are so many jerseys out there, you know, like Le Cole and other things. And what's happening now with the growth of this channel, I've told you guys before, I get a lot of people soliciting, wanting to send stuff in. And I try to be real picky. Uh, the reason why I decided to try the Suki was that she was very flexible. She sent an email talking about, can you please review this? She sent a link. And so I went to their site, and the, the styling looked good. And then I saw, I, I saw this color. I said, well, I'd like to see what this fits, fits like. And she said, oh, well, we'll have to make it because this is like their custom top-of-the-line jersey for them. The shorts that they sent was like their base. The reason why she said the base was I told her, my legs are big. I need shorts that will fit large legs and be long. And then she said the base short, which worked really well. I'll stand up. I'm wearing it. They're called Suki. 
So I'm getting a discount code. When I bring these things and they're good enough, they have to be good enough before I do a review and bring it to the channel anyway. And I, I want to get a discount code so everybody can benefit on the channel. You're going to buy it and they get, uh, I think it's like at least 10% discount. The price is already good and they're having a sale. So then if you get the discount code, it's even less. So that's, that's just a deal all around. And if you like it, you can get multiple copies. <laughs> Leonardo de La Roca, he said, my knees hurts. Robert Tangler, welcome, Robert. There's no ride this week, Robert. I took Saturday off and then Sunday just spun by myself. So we decided to just chat, get you guys ready for spring. It's time to get ready for the rest of the season. So I rested and now I'm building back up. Paul and I just got back from, from a ride. So he, he may join us later. But he just left here a little while ago before I started this session. We went out to Cimarron today, and of course the wind was out there, but we, you know, we cooked it. We had a good, good ride. Uh, what's going on with your need, Leonardo? Sounds like you've got some issues. Got to be a little more specific. Is it hurting because your position's off, or did you twist it? What happened? Yeah, you don't want to mess around with your knee. You don't have any spares. So maybe you're pushing too big a gear or your position is off. I would err on the side of maybe your fit may be off and you're doing a lot more riding. That's what we're talking about today. Your annual fit review before you begin your full-blown program. You know, Joaquim, good morning. Joaquim is on the other side of the world in the land down under. I think. That's why he said good morning. It's tomorrow there. <laughs> it's Wednesday. <laughs> uh so um my bike is not that good okay what what bike do you have your bike is not that good it sounds like i don't think it's necessarily your bike not being good it's uh yeah it's the fit it's not it's not what you pay for the bike that matters um i have a lot of people that come they come to bring their bikes for repairs um, yeah, Robert, I think Robert, Robert Tangler has a trike. Uh, Robert, I started doing some repairs by appointment. So if your trike needs work, just hit me up and we'll take care of that. But, um, Leonardo, what you need is a bike fit. Um, yeah, you, know, you know, you need some, you need a bike to fit you regardless of what you pay for it. If, if the bike is too short for you, then if you're not seated properly, yeah, that can hurt your knee. Maybe your saddle's too low. Carlos, greetings. Uh, if you, to, I don't know if you're local or not. If you're not local, you can uh, probably do our remote fit. But regardless of what you pay for the bike, you should be able to make sure that your saddle position is decent. While Kim's asking about this jersey. This jersey is something I'm introducing to the channel. I'm glad you asked about it. I talked about it. A little while ago before you got here this is made by a company called suki sports the review video will come out tomorrow and all the details will be there and I'll, i'm putting together a code that will give you guys discounts i don't want to bring anything to the channel unless i can get some deals as well so when they call and they want me to introduce their product i kind of challenge them to say okay give me a discount code for my audience so you can take it back because their prices are very good they're having sales but I still want the code to work in conjunction with their sales so you get an additional discount. So I'm, I'm putting that together. And the good quality is it's a, the quality of La Passion, in my opinion. And I got the short as well. It's a nice combination kit. This is uh, Suki Sports. I like this little thing they did on the arm. But you'll see all of that in the video. I wore it today, and it passed the test. And I'm going to do a I, – I've got a full review already done, and I have some – film that will add to the review where I'm on the road and Paul films me with the kit so you get to see it. I wore my orange laser helmet with it, which matches, and I wore my orange Giro shoes. It looks really good, you know, so that will let you know. I, I want to do, I, I like to do these full reviews out of where I ride the short on the trainer or on the road, because most people don't do that, because the padding is very important, and the padding is on par with Castelli and La Passion. The pad disappeared. I mean, I was spinning. That's how you test your shorts. I was spinning 110, 120 RPMs, no discomfort. That's how I. That's how I really put my my shorts through the paces. So let's see here. 
Yeah, Robert, uh, definitely. You can even book an uh, appointment online. Just go to my website. It's there. I made it to work. Everybody was calling. It was getting to be too much to deal with, so I set up an online thing, and all the details are there. Let's see here. Uh, so uh, let me go back to Leonardo. Um, get a fit. Get a bike shop locally where you are, or if you can't find anybody you trust, you can do it online. You need that bike to fit you. Otherwise, you will continue to have problems with your knee. You don't have any spare knees, so don't 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 skim on that. Carlos, greetings to you. Um, the, yeah, so Joaquin, watch out for the video, the release video. I'm, I'm trying to do about a Mar or Thursday. I've got the the thing already done. I just need to get the the, the discount code codes. Leonardo says he's got a 26 year model from the 90. Yeah, it doesn't matter what what age the bike is. If it's in good working condition, you just need to get fitted to it. Doesn't matter what you pay. He said he can't move up the saddle. The tube is also too short. Okay. So, yeah, the bike doesn't fit you. It's kind of like getting an ill fitting pair of shoes. So, I would try to get rid of the bike and get something bigger. If you know what size, you know, get yourself size so you know what bike you, you're going to get. Robert's going to Kentucky, going to try and ride vertically challenging there. Yeah, Kentucky's got, got some nice terrain. Good place to ride. Good place to ride. Yeah, you want the bike to fit you. I tell everybody on here, I mean, it was a $50 bike, so no big investment, but it's always good to know your size before you shop for bikes because you, you can get really good deals, especially in the used bike market, like uh, Facebook Marketplace is a good place to look. Because some people are unloading bikes that's just been sitting in the garage. They may not even know what they have. You can find deals out there. Or you can look on OfferUp. There are a bunch of other places you can look. But you need to know your size before you go shop. You know, you can't just go out there. Because like you've experienced now, you can't even raise the saddle up. Now, if you bought a longer seat tube, you probably could. But still, it would probably feel like a skateboard if it's too small for you. I'd much rather have a, a correctly fitting bike that's inexpensive than an expensive bike that doesn't fit me very well. You just can't enjoy it, you know. That's another reason I, I, I'm very cautious about buying bikes off the shelf. I've talked about it here before because um, a lot of the new bikes, the carbon bikes, whatever, they're coming with 73.5 seat tubes in my size. I, work, I can ride a 56. That's my sweet spot size. Well, most of the 56 got 73.5, so I can't fit that. I can't get my saddle back far enough. And then the top tube is too short because I, I need a longer, I need like a 59 and a half or 60 top tube so I can run a 12 or 13 step. So that's the reason why when I was able, I got a couple of bikes that were custom. That's another reason why my call Noggle has such a serious setback on the seat post, like 3.2 centimeter setback seat post. It allows me to get my saddle back far enough so I'm seated where I need to behind the bottom bracket. So that's, that's the key. So it doesn't cost that much more for a custom bike, but why buy a bike that you can't fit yourself to and spend all that money on? So you got to be cautious. You have to know which angles will work for you before you go shopping for bikes. Because not everybody at the bike shop understand fit. Some of them are just selling bikes. So be cautious. So Joaquin says, would you recommend a TXT bike for one who is riding a road bike? What's a TXT bike? Joaquin Hernandez, too, too, sorry. I don't know. Maybe he'll clarify. What is a two? You keep putting T-O, T-O. What are you doing? <laughs> Take your time and compose and then put it there. Let's see here. Leonardo says, there's a guy who built bike where I live. He's in Spain, okay, Tenerife. He sells classic bikes. He told me he would get me a good bike for me that fits me. He has an Instagram page, Old World Bike. Hope I get mine. Yeah, just you need to know your you need to it's kind of like going to shop for a shoe. You need to know which size.
Uh, Joaquin wants to know, would I recommend a time trial bike for one who is riding a road bike? Um, I'm not sure why you need a time trial bike. Are you doing time trials? You need to realize a time trial bike rides differently than a road bike. They're designed for speed. They're heavier than a road bike. So you have to think about the kind of riding you're doing before you spend the money on that bike. Even if you got a good deal on a time trial bike, yeah, it's fine. You could probably ride it from time to time. But your position will be different because you move forward and you roll your hips differently. So make sure you get size for it and get fitted for it so you can have fun. But know that a time trial bike is not going to handle like your road bike. So if you're a guy doing, say, criteriums, don't get a time trial bike for that purpose. But if you're doing, say, time trials or you're a triathlete or you're doing biathlons or you're riding solo and fast, then, yeah, you can get a time trial bike for that. But if you're just somebody who likes to ride fast, steady, you can still get a time trial bike and maybe stay on the back of a group. Or when you go to the front, you see some of the guys that come out with clip-ons or whatever. But just know it's a different discipline. It's going to behave and feel different. <laughs> How do I get strong legs? You got to do the work, man. <laughs> You got to train to get strong legs. Uh, you need a training plan, and you need to do the work. You need to know, you know, to get strong legs. You need to do harder efforts. Period. That's what we're talking about. Periodization training. Um, you need a training plan that will basically give you the right mix of work and rest, so you train in the proper zones to strengthen your legs. You know. The, the right kind of, I mean, you have muscular, you have, you need a, the right kind of workouts. Go to the website, veloharmony.com, and look at our, we got workouts and we got training plans, and that will give you an idea. Maybe you get one of them. But, yeah, that's how you got to do the work. I mean, most of my improvement came from having a coach that got me there quickly because it, it was more specific. And that's why I built these e-documents that are on there because everybody's asked for it, but it frees me up so people can download. So yeah, you can download one of those plans on the website, and that will help you get stronger. But you really need to either train to power or heart rate, because the bicycle, you can cheat. Going downhill, you can cheat. Going downwind, you can cheat. So if you want to maximize your time, you want to focus on effort. That's how you get strong legs by doing the right combination of work. But that's that's the way. But you don't want to start riding hard until your bike is fitted to you so you don't injure yourself. Like you're saying, your knees are hurting now. You don't want to injure yourself riding a, a, an ill-fitting bicycle. That's the biggest thing. So I hope that will help you. Um, Let's see here. Let's see if I can find a link here. Now, allergies are acting up. I was just outside. We got a lot of pollen and they bottom my nostrils. Let's see. All right. Trying to find a link so you can just look at the different fitness programs we have. That would help you. Holly Longa is here. Yep. Finally joined us. Cool. Welcome, my brother. Everybody likes the kit, my brother. They're asking about it. So they'll get to see your film that you did on the road with the kit. I'm going to put it in there and try to – I will try to get the review out tomorrow as soon as possible. I'll work – I will try to wrap it up tonight and get it out because uh, our brother down under is already Wednesday there. He's asking about it so that way he can see it. Let's see here. I'm trying to find this link for – Leonardo, who wants to know how he gets strong legs. Start with a good bicycle that fits you first. So that guy who's build, who builds the bikes or whatever, I don't know if he does bike fits. I mean, if he's building bike, maybe. But you need to get fitted so you know what bike he can give you. It sounds like he may have an idea. 
you, everything starts with getting a bike that fits you so you can enjoy riding. Um, let me find the, I'm just going to give you the link to all our fitness programs and you can go in there and check them out. Let's see here. <laughs> yeah, man, everybody likes the kid. I really like it. And I, I, I haven't seen the film yet that you did because soon as I got home, I started this. I want to see how it looks with the orange helmet. I'm going to wear it again maybe on Saturday. Here's the link, Leonardo. Check it out. He said, do I use GPS for your bike to prevent? I don't, I don't leave my bike out of my sight, Leonardo. I use my eyes. I don't use GPS. I don't put my bike anywhere that people can get it. Yeah. You, if, if, when you invest in a bike, uh, I don't leave it around. Now, I don't know if you ride in the city and you have to park it or whatever. When we stop at a store, we keep the bikes where we can see them. There's always someone outside and we park them where there's a glass, we can see them. We don't leave our bikes out of our sight. I don't give someone the opportunity to steal my bike. So that's the way you have to do that. You know, and if you're parking in the city, get a lock. Get a lock for your bike, take the front wheel off, lock the frame to something that they can't lift it off easily because they'll look for opportunities. They're going to look for the easiest bike they can steal. They're not going to look for the bike that will give them a problem. If you must leave your bike in the city, you need to lock it up. Get a cable, whatever, or you lock. You know, make it difficult, make it unattractive to steal, and they'll look for something else. Yeah, so that that's the way you have to, to, to do it. I don't, yeah, I don't want anybody taking my bike because uh, my bikes are like my kids. <laughs> I'm kind of attached to them, you know. I put a lot of thought. You know, I tried a lot of bikes when I used to race. So I got a chance to try them. So I put a lot of thought into the bikes that I have now. And I like them. I like the way they behave and everything. So really, right now, I focus more on getting different wheels. Because wheels really make the difference in how your bike feels and rides and so forth. But that's what I focus on if I'm going to make any changes. I'm happy with my frames. They fit me. And that's the biggest thing. So, you know. If I, if I am fortunate enough to be able to get another frame, it will be a carbon frame, but it's going to have to be one that fits me. And uh, I know Calfee makes a custom carbon frame because I've been looking at the different canyons and different things and their dimensions. I would have to get a 60 in a canyon frame to get the seat angle I like. And that's too big. I ride a 56. So if I'm going to be spending that kind of money, I might as well get a custom. The custom carbon frame costs the same as these frames off the shelf. So why not get a bike that fits me for the same money? You know, And more and more of them, I think, will start doing custom because Calvi has the market corner. Calvi has been doing custom frames for a long time. This started at Calvi Kestrel. They started the carbon craze back in the day. So don't feel like you have to settle. That's why you want to do a bike sizing before you purchase. We got a lot of demand for that, so I set it up to where I can do it. We do it online and remotely, so it's kind of cool. But you want to do that and save yourself the headache. Uh, oh, Leonardo, your messenger. Well, you know that. Yeah, so you have to leave the bike not very good place, so that's an issue. Yeah. The you lock is fine. Leave it in a visible spot. Don't put it somewhere where somebody can have enough time to mess with it. Even though you're a messenger, I mean, take your front wheel, lock the frame to something in front of a place, the place you're delivering or whatever. Leave it in a public visible visible place. They will leave it alone. But if you want, if you put it in the alley, they got enough time. They, nobody will see them. So that's the way you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, if you're a messenger, man, you need to maybe look at getting a fixie or something if you're in the city. The low maintenance, but it definitely has to fit you. You can't cheat with a fixie because there's no coasting. So you have a lot of options. Get, a, get something made out of steel. Get something tough. They have very light steel out there now. You don't have to get crazy light bikes for that for what you're doing. 
Um, this is a good question. I'm glad you asked that, TV. So how often should you get a fit? There is there is no particular frequency. I like for people to get a fit if they're having an issue, meaning you're riding and you've got saddle sores, you've got discomfort, you're finding yourself moving, you feel like, oh, I want to be here or whatever. You guys watch the rides that we have. One of the guys that, that, that schedules the ride, Mark. <laughs> Every time he goes hard, he arches his back and he moves. He needs a fit. You shouldn't have to move when you put power to the pedal. You should be in the same position. You shouldn't have to move. Because the body is moving because it says, I'm not optimal where I am right now, and you asking me to do more. So it moves where it believes you should be. So if you're having numb hands or you know, numb feet, yeah, get it reviewed because things change over time. If you've purchased a new shoe, New cleat, you know, new, I mean, new new pedal system. Those kind of things affect your fit. Don't let somebody tell you that every year you need a fit. No, you need to get a fit to where you don't need a fit unless you make changes. So to start with a good bike fitter to get you dialed in, and if you're not going to change your shoes or anything like that, you should be fine once you're dialed in. But there is not one fit that will get you perfect the first time necessarily. So as you ride, you pay attention to the things that are bugging you. And then you, when you get a fit, you tell, stick with the same fitter. Find somebody you're comfortable with so that you will make it easy for him to make those incremental adjustments. What I usually do, I give people 30 days when they do a fit for follow-up at no charge. Because a lot of people come and do a fit that don't ride. Well, you're not going to be coming back forever. That's not practical. So I tell them, go ride the bike. you got four weeks to deal with any issues that might come up. Because I have people do fits in their favorite shorts, the shoes you're going to ride, whatever. And I work you on the trainer to wear. You know, in fact, I'm going to release a fit I did Friday for a young lady. She couldn't stop riding once I got her dialed in. <laughs> and, you know. They're, they're, they're having so much fun, so much comfort. Don't want to stop riding. And she has good ability. and She, she shows good ability. It's a, a, another customer's daughter. But anyway, keep in mind that don't let people tell you, oh, you need an annual fit. Well, that's not necessarily true. You need a fit when you're having issues or you've made changes that have caused you to experience discomfort. Because... You have you if you're dialed in, you don't usually need anything unless something has changed. Did the bike fall and the bars moved or whatever? And you're having numb hands, but a lot of times, if you stick with the same fitter, they'll know exactly what has happened and just move you back there. So, no, a lot of the top fitters offer follow up, and that's what you want to use. And if you use that, you may not need another fit unless you, you change something. Joaquin say your base plan says it is for advanced and intermediate. How does one classify oneself as intermediate? Uh, intermediate means that you you basically are an active person. You've been running, swimming, doing something. You've been active. That's what it means. You're not just somebody who has never worked out before. If you look at if the details of the base plan, basically you're starting off with very easy rides. Um, if you've never cycled before, you don't want to start a, a, a program that will challenge you too much because when you're just brand new in cycling, the first thing you want to do is get fitted and get comfortable using the bike, using the gears. That's the reason I said intermediate because I don't want somebody who doesn't even know how to shift wanting to do those workouts because they're just going to strain themselves. If you don't know how to shift and you're in a very heavy gear, you can hurt your knee. So we want people who are familiar with the bicycle. You don't need to be an expert, you know. That's what I mean. But it's easy enough that if you've ridden for a few months, yeah, you can handle it. There's enough detail in there to guide people, but it's not for somebody who just brand new in cycling. Uh, believe it or not, I get a lot of people who don't even know how to shift a bicycle. And that's okay. 
but I don't want them doing that plan. They need to get comfortable knowing that when I click the little button on my ergo levers, it's going to make it harder. When I do the big one, it's going to make it easier. These are the kind of people I run into sometimes quite a bit. That's why when that was designed, I started at intermediate. Paul Sanchez in Southern California. <laughs> How you doing, man? Welcome. TV says, good on the road, but not near as comfortable on the trainer. Okay. Um, actually, it's a good thing that it's good on the road because the final decision is always made on the road. What that may tell me, TV, I mean, I don't know your setup, is that it is very likely that your trainer may not be very level. It is important that the trainer and the, the block, the chalk block that holds your wheel, be set up to where it's level so it replicates the route and that you don't have too much resistance on the train. So that's probably part of the issue. The trainer needs to be set up level so it feels like you're on the road. That's something to look into. Leonardo wants to know if clip pedals makes a difference. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to ride without one. <laughs> you know, I test a lot of bikes that just have flat pedals. You can't pedal that fast because if your if your foot slips, it's gonna hit you in the shin. Yeah, clipping in connects you to the bike, and that's why you need a bike fit. Because when you're clipped in, you can't cheat. You're locked in, and where you sit, those are your contact points: your rear, your feet, and your hands. Those are the three points that needs to be dialed. Yes, it makes a big difference. Anybody who rides for any extended period of time eventually goes to the old style toe clips or just straight to clipless. I get a lot of people that go from flat to toe clips and then they go to clipless because they're worried about clipless pedals. And the reason they're worried about it is because most of them ship with very high tension and for them to release, they fight to release. Everybody I fit, I adjust the tension on their clipless pedals to where you don't have to think about releasing. And that usually sets them at ease. Because they, they, they come too tight. You know, I made a video about that on the channel. So yes, makes a big difference. Big difference. And I wouldn't ride a bike I wasn't clipped into unless I'm messing around the neighborhood, just sightseeing or something. You pull up, use the muscles in the back of your legs. That's where you really get to use all the big muscles in your legs. You know, that connection to the bike makes the bike an extension of your body. That's how we can ride eight hours. I wouldn't ride eight hours with a flat pedal. My quads would kill me because I'd be using them more. So, yeah, definitely. All right. So pay attention to your fit as you ride. Listen to your comfort. Um, it doesn't matter how inexpensive or expensive your shorts are. What matters is that if the bike does not fit you, even the expensive shorts will not feel great. It, it, yeah, it, it doesn't bail you out. You can't cheat by buying assos and then you have a bad fit. You will just be uncomfortable in style. <laughs> so... Uh, it starts with a fit. Invest and work on that. And, and for most riders, including myself, we spent a period of time working on our fit. The reason why you want to get professional help is because if you just do it yourself, you won't know what changes to make. And so you will spend decades. It is not uncommon to spend decades messing with fit because you don't understand the nuances of what changes need to be made. So it's worth the investment to get with a fitter so they can explain to you how fit works. Most of the top fitters will walk you through it because the fit belongs to you. The reason I explain to people is so that they can understand the impact of going to buy the latest shoe, not understanding that it may not suit their foot. So you, you can't just buy any kind of shoe. You have to buy shoes that are made for your kind of foot or come with foot beds that you can change or get a custom foot bed. Anything, any contact point that doesn't make with your body, 
will cause you discomfort. So Paul says he's having, uh, Leonardo says he, he understands now that how important it is to have a bike that fits him. And then he says, thanks for the info. I just thought I needed to rest. No. If your knee is hurting, you hurt the knee because that saddle is too low. And a low saddle puts a lot of pressure on your knee. When the saddle is too high, it puts pressure on a different part of the knee. If it's too low, it puts pressure on a different. So you, you're you going to injure yourself. So you really don't, you don't want to ride that bike. It's like running in an ill-fitting shoe. It's the same thing. So, you know, it's not worth. You paid 50 bucks for it, your knees are more valuable than that. Paul says he's having some left shoulder pain on long run. just started hurting. I took two weeks off. The pain is back. You need your fit reviewed, Paul. Um, yeah, and, and everybody, that's why anybody would tell you because I don't really know how you're set up. You shouldn't be having any shoulder pain. You're not using your shoulder. And it is very likely that your cockpit is not where you should be or your weight is not properly displaced on the saddle and the pedal. So your shoulder may be trying to help you cheat. So yes, your entire fit needs to be reviewed. If you don't have a good fitter that you trust and you have an indoor trainer and you're handy with tools, you can use our uh, remote fit and I will walk you through what you need to do. You would just need to do out of FaceTime or uh, we can do some other video chat and get that resolved. But that's what you need. That's why you're having a problem. Your body's telling you, you shouldn't be having any pain in your shoulder. This, this part of your body should be relaxed when you're riding. Uh -huh. TV says, Elder, everybody that sees the Bethune mirror has to have one. Thanks again for the tip. You're welcome. I love them. They're, they're just jewelry for the bike. It's beautiful. I, I, I love them so much, I, I just can't imagine riding without them. They're very handy. I set, I've i set mine up to where I don't move my head anymore. I have it set to where I move my eye, and I look there, and I can see what's behind me exactly. So I don't even need to move my head down. And that's the way you need to set it. You set it to where you just move your eyes. You shouldn't have to turn your head. You should adjust that mirror because it comes, it can come in. So you adjust it to where you see a little bit of your foot, your leg. And that way you can see directly behind you in your lane. And you just look down. You don't move your head. I'll move my eyes and I can see behind you. So I just glance. It, it works great. I love it. And it's not in your face. It's not very obvious. Yeah. Beautiful. That's another thing. Be careful. Look, nobody steals that off your bike. <laughs> but I don't know. They'd have to do some work because they got to unscrew the little thing it attaches to. So that's probably not an issue. But yeah, I love it. I just like that nobody notices it. I've talked about it. I made a video about it. No one notices it when I ride. I like that. Paul, you're welcome. Paul says thank you. Yeah, you, you need to you need to look at your fit. That's you should not be uncomfortable. Your hand, nothing should be. People always ask, how, do you, how can you guys ride six hours, seven hours? That's how. Our bike fits us. We're comfortable. I could ride all day if I wanted to. you know. But as much as I love cycling, I also have other things I love to do. So I break it up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> ah, so it's kind of like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to ride 12 hours a day. That's, that's too much. That's a bit much. So. That's the, uh, the thing. So keep in mind that you need to make sure when you go and ride, your bike is comfortable because when you're comfortable, you'll put out more power. You're not moving around. You can just ride. Because you probably see a lot of riders. I see it all the time. Before they go hard, they have what, is, what we call a tail. Everybody's different. One person will arch the back or do something because they're trying to get in position to ride hard. You should already be in position to ride hard. Because when, when I'm really spinning and I get in the drops, 
your hips are kind of like the bottom of my palm, the, the bones at the bottom of your hip that you sit on, your, your issue of pubic rumors, they're round. So when you get in the saddle, they roll forward. You've probably seen some of the Euro pros like Peter Sagan and them. When they're going hard, you can see the back of their saddle. They have not moved forward. They just went down and that hip rolled into just that little area in the saddle where it comes and becomes pointed to, the, to where your legs are free. So you don't really move. You, your body just roll, your hips just roll forward. That's the same thing in a time trial position. When you get down, your hips roll because they're circular under there. That's the best way I can explain it. So whoever sets you up needs to set you up to where you're not sitting on the back of the saddle. Your, your sit bones are sitting, like there's a two centimeter area that you sit on. You should be there to where when you need to go hard and you go down, your hips just don't move, but they roll, they rotate forward and then you ride. That's why most saddles have a dip in the middle because you're going to roll into that dip. And then the front is up a little bit to anchor you. And then when you're done and you sit up, you roll back. Or you're still in the same position. It's like a pivot. That's what's going on. Now, some of these pros that I see, they literally scoot forward. Uh, there was one guy whose position is really ex a little extreme, uh, Geron Thomas. He kind of looks like he's sitting on the tip of the saddle. But he's not really on the tip. What, he, what it looks like is he's sitting... Almost like this. I think it's this way. The best way I can explain it. It's like he sits like he's on the skinny part of the saddle, but not really. He's still utilizing that little curved area, but he's forward more than the average person. So you see more of his saddle in the back. And a lot of times you see that when they, when they lean forward. The body just kind of pivots. You shouldn't have to be scooting around. You should just roll forward and then when you move it rolls back like an anchor is that anchored position like a fulcrum that allows you to generate power from that same spot because you're anchored and you do, your legs just go like pistons so fit is important without that you just you know you, you still will be okay but you get home and you get in the shower everything burns and you got all this chafing going on you know and then some people will put a, a chamois cream or whatever. As I said before, I will use chamois cream when it's wet because your skin gets a little clammy. Other than that, you don't need chamois cream if the position's right. Let's see here. Uh, Paul Sanchez TV said, did not think it would work as good as it does. He has nobody noticed it until you pointed out. Yep, that's been my experience. That's my wife over there. Someone she can see me riding for 12 hours. Yeah, I probably could, but yeah, got other things to do each day. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I like the I like the Batu mirror. I've got one on each of my frames now. Um, I've got the the ones with the cork in there on two of them. And then I've got the solid black one. That's what they have when I got it. I I like I like it. I got the the, the bigger ones. The, big, the one that wasn't made by Betu when I tried the mirror first, but I like that size. It's about the size of the the bar. <laughs> this, is, this is perfect. You know, I like that you can set it and tighten it a little bit. And get, you can dial it in easily, and it doesn't move easily. You don't have to really bump it, but it's easy to set. I really like that. It works really well. I, I really like uh, the ease of seeing behind you now. Yeah, I use the road more now because I know what's back there. I take the lane when I need to because I can see where they are without turning around. And so I, I signal, I let them know that I know they're there. And sometimes they probably wonder how you, how you know because, you know, they can't really see that mirror easily. But now I interact with them like I always ha have, but I can interact with them more timely. I know what they're doing. And, yeah, you know, so I, I really like that. I think it's. I think every cyclist should have some kind of a mirror. You know, just it just incre it has increased my relaxation on the road. I wasn't nervous in the past, but there are fewer surprises now because I don't ride looking at the mirror. It's just like in your car. 
You don't ride looking at the rear view mirror. You glance at it when you need to know what's going on back there. Same thing. And I set it to where I don't need to move my head. I look down, I can see it, I glance, and then do what I need to do and go. It's really, really cool. So, you know, I like it for another reason because if I'm not the only one at an intersection, I stop because I have a rep to protect as a cyclist. So there are cars coming up behind me and no one is, you know, especially a four way, you know how we are. Four way, we can see, we just end up going. I don't do that because there are cars behind me. I go ahead and stop because we have a bad reputation. I've seen, we have a, a neighborhood app here called Next Door Neighborhood where I live. And they talk about us cyclists running stop signs, left around. and I see other cyclists doing it. So I make sure that I don't do it so that they can see a cyclist stopping. You know, and so they can talk about that too, because it's kind of like uh, if you're the only one there and no one's out in the early in the morning, yeah, I check and then I go. But if I see somebody, yeah, so that that's another thing I use it for. And I think that's we we got to rehabilitate our reputation. We've seen we're seen as lawbreakers. Now we know drivers drivers are people are like oh they run. I see them roll stop signs all the time, but they're the same ones saying that we're doing it all the time. You know, they got the nerve. <laughs> so, all right, let's see. Um, <laughs> TV likes the mirror. Yeah, I mean, the Bethune mirror, I, I just, um, I, I searched on Google when I found the other one, it showed up. Then I found that it was sold at Renee Hurst. I ended up getting one from a, a company in the UK, Velo something. I talked about it in another video. So, yeah. I have no affiliation like you. You know, TV says not affiliated with the product. The product just works. It does not matter whether it's Bethude or any other mirror. Cat Eye makes one that's a little bigger or whatever. They all work. What I like about the Bethude, it's kind of like having a nice piece of jewelry on your body. That's, that's you know, but if you can get one of those. Everything about the way it's designed, you can see the thought they put into it. And it's a solid fixture, meaning it doesn't bounce around. So you don't have the image vibrating. It's solid and it looks real. The image is real. It's not closer than it appears or anything like that. You know, further than it appears. I already they do those mirrors. It's not a, a, a convex mirror or whatever. It's an actual glass mirror that works like the mirror in your car. So I really like that. Yeah. I have them and uh, when they when if it's not if, if I were to remove it, it would feel a little naked. Because I've gotten so accustomed to it now. So instead of me turning around all the time, I just glance <laughs> and make the necessary move. And from time to time, I'll turn around. If Let's say there's a car coming. I see it in the mirror. And I want to really gauge his speed or whatever because I need to make a left turn or whatever. After seeing him, I verify if I'm going to move across to make him make a, maybe make a left turn. But it's periodic. Because a lot of times you can tell how far they are. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Paul has a, a mirror on on the bike. He, he had a mirror. The both of us ride with mirrors. So I can see Paul when Paul's drafting. I can see him when I'm drafting Paul. He can see me when we ride together. So that's cool too. So you know your partner's there. You see what's going on. You don't have to wonder is he on my wheel, or whatever. You can see him in the mirror and still see. The cars, because the, Paul doesn't take up the whole mirror as small as it is. I don't know how that works, but that's just, you know, images in a mirror. So it's really cool to have and in the group. You can use that and keep your eye on what's going on. You know, so, yeah, I just I just have it there. And, you know, I've just gotten so accustomed to it, man. But it, it's, I think everybody should have some kind. They have, uh, like for mountain bike, they have the one. Some people have them that stand up, you know. It's like like a motorcycle mirror. Yeah, I think it's good to have. All right, we're going to wrap up. Uh, it's about an, an hour. I just wanted to kind of chat with you all. But uh, look into those of you, Paul, Sanchez, and the rest of you that are having problems. If you don't have a fitter you trust, then use our remote stuff because if you can use a 6.4 or, you know, millimeter Allen key, that's pretty much all you need. If you have a star nut, and you just need one of those star things, I will walk you through what to do to fix those issues you're having. And by the time you're done, 
you will understand more about how the bicycle should fit your body as you go forward buying stuff. That's what makes you need an annual fit. The changes you make, all the, the issues you encounter as you get fitter, like if you lose weight or whatever else is going on, you know, you may need to be dialed in a little more. So that's what drives the frequency of when you get a fit revisited. It's based on what's going on with you. If you're happy with everything, you don't need to do anything. But you need to understand fit, meaning how do I close that hole in front? Am I sitting too high, catching all this wind, when I can be lower to the limits of my flexibility? Because a lot of people come in, oh, I'm not... They, they forget that when you're picking up a box, you're supposed to bend your knees. And I try to explain to them, the bicycle is a load. When you're pedaling, that's load. That's drag. You're lifting with your legs. So you need to make sure your back is not involved in picking up that load. That's why you can't be sitting upright and trying to ride hard. You strain your back. That's why they recommend the 45 degree as a starting point. So you need to be dialed in to save all your shoulders, back, and all that kind of stuff. So thanks, everybody, for joining us today. More to come. Look forward to the review. This kit is coming out. I will work on it first thing in the morning or maybe tonight if I have the chance. But I want to get it out so you guys can experience it. I think it will be a good kit to introduce to the channel. I'm very thrilled about it. I'm hoping to send more and that we continue this collaboration because I want to introduce more of their products. The value is really good. I like the length of the sleeve. And they got, they just made a, it feels like silk. They, they, this is polyester and elastane. And they got in the feel almost like silk. It's really good. I like the color scheme. They have different colors to choose from. But since this had orange, I had to get it. So they sent that in. I didn't buy it or anything. They just sent it in. And I wasn't obligated in any way or the other. They're like, you know what? We're going to send you this. I tried to get more copies, but they just made this. And so hopefully we'll get more. Because I wanted to get Paul to get a copy so he could model it too, you know. I think you guys will like the kit. So make sure you let nothing stop you from getting your case in and be safe out there and watch those stop signs and lights because we got a rep to protect. Take care until we meet again.